Who's ready to learn? Ooh, me, me Who is. Who wants to learn some stuff? I want to learn some stuff. Who's supporting us at a high level on Patreon? Oh, that, oh that's not me. That's not, that's y'all. Y'all well, in the You in support the us in the sense that <laughs> you make the content that... Right. We yes. support ourselves. There would be no Patreon without us. I guess that's true. No Patreon to support. Wow. So true. How are you learners doing today? I hope you're doing well. What's up, learners? What's up, learners? End gonna... of year learners. Oh, yeah. Last learn of the year. Yeah. You won't no learn anything learning. else. <laughs> no learning allowed after this point. No, this is the final one. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all while, you know, people are trickling in here um, that I slept really bad last night. Let me tell you what happened. Okay. Chat. You're going to love this story. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. You started it to tell it to me. Yeah. But, but then I realized it could be content. Yeah. You save it. Save it for the stream. So I went to sleep, we right? said. Yeah. And I went to sleep and I, it was, I was sleeping good. But then oh, I woke sounds, up oh. at like 3 a.m. because it was mm. approximately 100,000 degrees in our bedroom because sometimes oh. our heat just goes sicko mode. Yeah, you got one of those. Yeah, and like the windows open to the freezing temperatures outside and even still it is like sweltering in there. Yeah. And so I wake up, look over, Julia's already awake because of how hot it was. So I have to get up and open the window more and then I'm too hot and I'm too frustrated. So I'm awake. You're, you're hot. You're hot and also bothered. Yeah. I'm hot and bothered, not in the fun way, but in the no. bad way. <laughs> and then, so I'm like, all right, well, I'll just read a book for a while. I read a book and I'm not getting book any, you're reading? any more tired. I started reading a, a court of thorn and roses, Thor thorns and roses. Ooh, it's like a popular um like YA sort of novel right now that people were telling me was good, but I've been enjoying okay. it so far. Yeah. Um, roses do have thorns. Yeah, both. That, you know, if you got a cord of roses, you're probably going to also have some thorns in there. Yeah, unfortunately. Unless you're dethorning the roses, but that's, you know. So then. Who's got the time? Sorry. I'm <laughs> up for like an hour and a half at least. Derailing your story. And then yeah. finally, I start to drift off again. I fall back asleep. The instant I lose consciousness, Joy does three loud meows at the door. Only three. She <laughs> Only meows three, three times wakes yeah. me up and then leaves and i'm so <laughs> mad at this point <laughs> that i can't go back to sleep again and so i'm awake again for a long time and then i can't sleep so much i leave the bedroom entirely go into the living room watch youtube videos until eventually i fall back asleep at like 8 a.m which videos did you watch i was watching some some marvel snap some uh -oh. do you know do you know dexter yeah i was watching dexter Snapster now. I was watching Snap Snapster. <laughs> Snap, yeah. I know Dexter from, from Hearthstone. Yeah, and now he's Snap. He's got such a, a calming vibe. That's what I was hoping for when I was watching Yeah, him. He's got a real chill way of talking and yeah. just like the lighting and everything. It's just like cozy. Cozy Anyways, vibes with, with Dexter. So that's that's what happened. Shout to me. out to Dexter here on the the learner stream. During that story, we lost a viewer, so the <laughs> the, <laughs> the angle I was coming from of like you know maybe we'll wait for people to trickle in. Someone trickled out. Yeah, we tri yeah we we, tri <laughs> we <laughs> well that's that's to separate the true learners yeah. from the the fake ones. We're trickling in the wrong direction, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, today on the class, cancel their Patreon. <laughs> this was a effect. mistake. <laughs> yeah, I hope Not it wasn't anything. I hope it wasn't cryptid flower who said they got this tier as a birthday gift and they're very excited. No, I hope it wasn't them that were like this birthday gift was shit. Actually, <laughs> I'm gonna sucks. ask for a refund. <laughs> I haven't learned anything. You're gonna okay. I'm about to start right now with the learning. Hey, you're gonna. You're gonna. Um, okay, so today... Honk if you love learning. Honk if you love learning. Today, <laughs> I thought we would talk about and do some... 
oh, excuse me, <laughs> learning from professional artists art because I got a way of, that I like to do it. Mm-hmm. And we've talked a little bit about this stuff before, like how to break down art when you're like doing studying and learning. Um, but I'm talking in particular about like you want to be learning from like professionals. Yeah. But it can be very daunting when you look at a piece of professional artwork. There's a lot. They do a lot of they're things. Doing, they're doing so many things. Yeah. In there. And so and you can see it and you'll be like. You're probably looking at it like. Well, I just wanted to learn one thing today. Yeah. Or even like, where do you start? It's like, it yeah. looks like so much. You're like, where do I even begin? Yeah. And so we're going to do some, um, some, some ways I like to do it, which is I like to find a piece where one aspect jumps out at me. And then I'm like, I'm going to figure out that aspect. And that's the one thing I'm going to focus on. I'm going to zoom in to a bit of this. And just figure out like how they're doing one or two things. I love that. Instead of trying to recreate like a whole piece because mm-hmm. they got, you know, de- years and decades of of build up that goes to the style they work in today. So remember when I tried to draw the ocean from that piece? Yeah. That was a mistake. It was too much. <laughs> it, was it was too much. <laughs> so we're going to avoid that. Yeah. That same fate. Yeah. Um, Cryptid Flower is still here. They they're enjoying their birthday gift. Okay, that's a really good. sweet. That's a really sweet birthday gift. Yeah, thank, thank you, you to whoever got you that. Yeah, and thank you to you for being here. Yeah, and everyone else who's here. Yeah, and and Andrew Bird and Negapol for being here also. Yeah. Um, it's always so funny doing draw classes because like. It's, it's it's like real sing, cozy. Sing, single digit viewers a yeah, lot of the time. We're just hanging out, and I'm just like, this is so this is so different than what I'm accustomed to in, right? in my place of privilege atop our ivory throne. Yeah, you write something in chat. We're gonna see it. It's not it's not going away. No, for it's a while. sitting there. You better be careful <laughs> with what you write. It's not getting lost in the sauce. Yeah. You are the sauce. You are the sauce. It's a very simple sauce. Um, okay, so I've got a list of artists here that I made. I put in a bunch that I wanted to look at. And then um, I also asked the Discord in the draw class chat if there were any that um, that y'all wanted to look at. And I did get some suggestions there um, from Zandrew Burt and Nepe. And so we're going to be looking at some of those suggestions as well. Awesome. I'm Um, excited because this is something that I would like to be better at as well. Well, we're going to learn to be better at it together today. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm going to share with you my screen. Please do. We want to share screen two. This is, this is Photoshop. This one. This one is Photoshop. Just get my brush ready here. Uh, and then I've got an Instagram up of the first artist I want to look at, which is an artist who every time I see, is it, I think it's a her. I don't actually know. I'm going to say there. Every yeah. time I see their work, I'm like, there's something about this that's so appealing. Um, so we're going to take a look first at Ona Sugar, who is a, a character designer at Powerhouse, previously Nickelodeon, Titmouse, Sun Creature, Yota. Uh, they're also doing a, um, a some of the, the stuff for the new Vampire Survivors um, expansion. Yeah. But something about the way they draw faces is so yeah. appealing. Very expressive, but like not overly exaggerated. Yeah, it's like really simple in terms of like the line work and the shapes and the clothes too. It's very effective, yeah. Very simple, real, very effective. They know they know where to put the details. There's something, yeah, there's like an elegance to it, you know? Yeah, it's the kind of thing I see and I'm like, I, I want this to be me in five years. I want to be drawn my, like this. My instincts is always to just keep adding details and there's there's something so powerful about being like, no, I, I know exactly where to put like one little splotch of shadow and that's that's gonna look like a nose and it's gonna be perfect and one little splotch for the lip 
and just a couple lines. Yeah, and it's, it's so, so cool. It's, it's so moody. Yeah. And like the colors too are just like right. flat yeah. mostly. But the image doesn't look flat. Mm -mm. But it's like muted tones and mm -hmm. mostly flats with shading just in like a couple places. Yeah, the shape, the shading shapes. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm so I'm I'm terrified of doing like a free floating just like shape of shading. I almost always have it touching the edge. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm with you. I do the same thing. Um so we're going to take a look at we're going to move something one of their pieces into Photoshop <clears throat> and um and and break down I think one of these like face ones is kind of what I, what I want to look at here. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this one. So we're gonna we're gonna harvest this image, and we're gonna go back to Photoshop, and like I said, the purpose of this class is like we're just gonna look at like little bits. We're not gonna try to recreate these faces because while Ona Sugar's style is like you know, has a simple vibe to it. The shape language is so confident. It's going to be difficult to, to measure up to. Right. But what, what I want to look at though, is that I love the way they do mouths. Like they're so simple in terms of the lines and shades used. Yeah. But they look so good. It's very effective. It's very effective. They know exactly where to put the lines to have the brain fill in the rest of the shape and so i, I want to figure some of that out so we're <clears throat> going to focus on mouths right now let's okay so we've we've chosen our our focus yeah so that's an important step is like step one pick the artist step two pick your focus and it can be something as as simple as as mouths yeah i think it's good to go small with this type yeah. of thing because you don't want to overwhelm yourself Mm -mm. by doing too much you're not gonna like retain it like if i'm if i'm just like i'm gonna copy these entire faces that's so much information i'm trying to get myself yeah. to retain and it's not it's like and also you're skipping the step which is like they got this good at doing these faces from years of of honing their craft yeah totally And so you're you're not gonna replace that by just copying them but you can still learn from them and notice stuff they're doing. Yeah. So we're just going to redline the basic shape here. Because it seems like it's sort Earthful. of like this. This is the shape. It's a beautiful little gem shape. And then we've got it's broken in half right here. Yeah. And so it's like the, it's like, yeah, it is like a gemstone shape with sort of a dipping top. Yeah. And I'm just going to try to like repeat it a little bit over here. And then it goes like, and something that I'm always looking at when I'm doing stuff like this is the, is you want to compare the lines to each other. Yeah. So like this line that goes up is like a little shorter than this one that goes down. Yeah, so when I'm doing bit, it, yeah, I want to make sure it goes down a little more than it goes. It looks like it's a little bit up. wider on the top. Like it's a that little, top, yeah. That horizontal line is a little wider on the top. Top line's the wider than the bottom line. So these are like simple things you can look at. Yeah. And and use those ratios. You don't even have to be like exact in your representation. But I just want to look at what I've done and be like, okay, is the top line wider than the bottom line? Yeah. Yes. Is are these lower angles here angled lines shorter than these ones? Yes. And it's not like an exact replica of the mouth. No. But I'm trying to like memorize the concepts here more right. so than like an exact replication. Cuz like replicating it's only going to get you so far. Yeah. But understanding the concepts will help more. And then I think this mouth here is good to look at next because it's the same expression, but turned three quarters. So we can start thinking about, okay, how does the shape change when it's turned three quarters? Right. It looks like this angle is still, sh this line is still shorter than this one. 
uh, and we've we've adjusted, we've cheated the middle of this dip to the left. Right. No left. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then what have we done here? This angle has what gotten a done? lot more shallow, and this angle has gotten a lot more steep. Right. Yeah. And so that's what we wanna we wanna be looking at here. And then we got yep. this lip thing. The middle of the shape has moved to the left, and so the left part is getting squished, and the right part's getting stretched. Yeah, yeah. And that's just like good, and again, this is like good stuff that you just remember. You try to remember these concepts rather than the specifics. Yeah. Be like, if I turn the mouth to the left, the left side's going to get more vertical, and the right side's going to get more horizontal. And yeah. then you can sort of do a similar thing. And that's that's pretty close. Obviously, it's like different. Like I made the top lip bigger. But that's okay. It's like you're trying to to learn the the ideas behind it, not the specific execution. Because you're not trying to like draw exactly like the person you're studying. You're trying to draw like you with the knowledge that this person has. Yeah. Because the, the face there is also, it's angled down very slightly as well. Yeah. So. If we take a look at that. Very slight seeing, down angle. Yeah, we're seeing a little bit of more of the top of her head, I think. Uh, and then this this one's angled even more down. Yeah. Sort of like this. And how does that affect the mouth? Well, let's look. We got our little top line with the dip. No, no move your hand. We're trying to look <laughs> at your mouth. We're trying to look at the mouth. Could you, <laughs> could you please? Could you please? <laughs> so now these That's such lines. such a nice hand also. I know. I know, I know. They're, on the mouth. Their but... hands are amazing. That'd be another good thing to study. Um, both of these lines are shallower now. Because we're tilting the head down, this bit that was vertical before is now very shallow because of the angle of the right. head. So that's another thing you can try to remember. It's like you can sort of infer what the rest of that lip would be doing if it wasn't covered by a, a fangy. I bet it would be doing something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, and then we got, and I love character sheets like this because there's so much reference from different angles. Yeah. And lips in profile, something I always struggle <clears throat> with. Yeah. They always look weird when I do them. So this is something I definitely want to learn here. So I think if we take, let's try to break it down like this kind of. Yeah. So no, of the... tip of the nose, you can kind of make a line from the tip of the nose down to the chin and see like how this new ratio works because the lips almost touch that line yeah um and then we'll make a line here too this line from the top lip to the bottom lip is parallel to the line from the nose to the chin look at that so that's an angle you can try to remember as well it's going to be different depending on who you're drawing and how their head is shaped Right. But this is like one like set of rules. If you're drawing a face like this, you can remember sort of these ratios. Yeah. And then we've got, um, if we, if we ignore this bit, this negative space for a minute, we've got our, our friendly shape here again. Here's the top line. It's just cut in half. Right. Yeah. Then here's the, this part. And then here's the, this part. And this is again just just this shape, but like half of it. But like half of it. And and angled. And you can see right. if you go from this one to this one, like the bottom lip starts receding more compared to the top lip. And then to this one, the bottom lip is receded even more compared to the top lip. So this is just sort of like I'm kind of free forming my thought processes here. Yeah. Jamie, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Welcome, Jamie. Uh, yeah, please. I'm glad you you figured out time zones uh, 
You did. You didn't even miss it by an hour. So no. that's cool. You're you're on one of those thirty minute time zones. <laughs> uh, but yeah, please do make an announcement in the Discord if you don't mind. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so if we take the shape, we cut it in half. We make sure the top lip is angled out more than the bottom lip. And then we got this this sort of shape here. So it's just sort of this, but with a cutout. Yeah, a little triangle. Oop. Why is my eraser a pencil tool eraser? Probably Julia's fault. Wow. If I had Blame to guess. Blame Julia when she can't even defend herself. It's on like, oh, it's on pencil mode. That's why. There we yeah. go. You got to change the mode. Who freaking uses pencil mode? Why can't I change the size? There we go. <laughs> Slightly sleep deprived Jacob getting frustrated. So this one's a pretty straight across profile, but this one is an up angled profile. Yeah. And you know how much I love an up angle. So it's this the, I definitely the rude wear. angle. Yeah. And it's like, how does this impact? Let's do the same thing here. This is like a three quarters profile up angle. We got the nose to chin line and the lip line again parallel to the nose to chin line. So it seems like there's sort of a unspoken rule there. Yeah. Um, and then here's our shape again, but this time the top lip is more vertical because also, it's angled if, up. Can we, can we zoom out for a sec and look at the other line? Yeah. So this line is a little steeper than that line because oh this this line yeah it, yes. it's a little it's a little steeper than the the full profile yes because the the chin is is sticking out a little bit more in this up angle like the nose is further back and the chin is further out so it's it's more vertical yeah totally angle. and so that's something you can remember if the head is tilted back that nose to chin <clears throat> line is going to get a little more you can even see it on my face. Here's my nose to chin line. If I tilt my head up, that line becomes steeper, more yeah. close to vertical. Um, Negapol said, I don't know if this was addressed already, but would emulating an artist's style also help to learn from them? It totally does. Um, but um, as I'm, the point I'm trying to get across in this class is that just emulating the style is probably not gonna teach you as much as breaking it down like this, like trying to figure out the rules behind the style rather than just the surface level aesthetics of the style, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me. So you want to look for like consistencies across their work and like why they're making the choices they're making, like what are the reasons behind it? Uh, and then we got a little bit of a dynamic mouth here. Oh yeah. Because mouths, they're they're not always just closed. They're not, believe it or not. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they open. Sometimes they open. Um, <laughs> but you'll notice it's our shape again, but just morphed. So this time, both lines here are a bit more vertical because of the the expression. And then our, our top one is, is widened out and it's higher on one side than the other, which kind of gives that like disgusted look or like complaining, like, Meh. and then Meh. we got this line here, this little, Oop. this little up arrow for the bottom lip that indicates that it's the lip is being lifted in the middle, like in a sort of a frown or like a pout. So we can look at this shape here which is like this shape if you just sort of morph it to suit your, your needs. And then we got a, this, the shape here in the middle of like the open mouth actually mirrors the bigger shape around it. Just like sort right. of a squashed version of it. <laughs> it's a little mogus. It's a, it is. <laughs> Got a little knife. <laughs> <laughs> Everything Sus. is an amogus. 
Uh, Iyer Sprite said, it seems like you would learn how to draw like them, but not larger fundamental understanding. Is that about right? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. I think you wouldn't, you would learn how to replicate what you're looking at, but not learn how to do it on your own. Like you want to be learning in such a way that you're get, giving yourself knowledge that you can use when you're not looking at reference. And um, that's kind of what I'm going for here. So it's a little more, yeah. it's a little more useful outside of just like copying, but the copying right. you still learn. I mean, I feel like everyone learns to draw from copying at the beginning. Yeah. You draw your Gokus, but that's more, I think that fleshes more of your like physical learning ability out like your, you know, your line quality and like your hand steadiness. And there's like a physicality to drawing that. You have to kind of get that part down first. Right. Like you should draw stuff that you like to draw because it'll get you to draw more. And the more you draw, just like the better you'll get at those those basic things. Yeah, totally. But you're also trying to enrich the way you think about approaching. Uh, I had an art teacher once who, who referred to like like an art piece as like solving it basically like solving yeah, a yeah. piece totally like you have the problem of wanting to represent something that exists in three dimensions in two dimensions how do you solve that problem and there are ways to do that that um different people use uh in their in their work and so if you can understand how they solve that problem in like a like a, a intellectual level or just like in your mind, then you can apply that to your own work without yeah, your, having your own to... problem solving. Yeah. Cause like, I, I honestly think cause in, in doing this class, there's a lot obviously that I don't know. And so I'm like learning this stuff too. This little bit here about this line and this line, I'm going to remember that. Yeah. It's going to be like when you're playing The Walking Dead. It's like Jacob will remember this. <laughs> Telltale game, yeah. Yeah, like next time, because I that's something that I just really noticed right now that I hadn't picked up on before. And like the comparison of those two angles, I think is going to be really helpful for me just as a rule to keep in mind going forward. So like we're looking yeah. for like rules. So it is like sort of there's two different skill sets you're you're leveling up when you're drawing like this it's the physical act of drawing which any drawing will help you get better at um in which case copying is good because it's just like putting in the reps like the exercises of like moving your arm and wrist and and pencil or stylus and then the mental act of learning these rules and fundamentals is sort of like a separate skill set and they both come together to make to make your art uh, but it depends on kind of where you're at in your art journey as to which one you should be focusing on more. I think when you're really early on, just the physical act of drawing is the most important thing because you do need to have the ability to make the lines you want to make um, before you can really start to delve into this stuff where you're trying to like apply these rules and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, shall we move on to the next artist? Let's let, let us, let us do it. Um, okay. Who, who I got on my list here. This was one that, um, Nepe suggested, uh, Chris Riddle or Riddell. So let's pull up Chris Riddell. Ooh. I was looking at, um, I was looking at his stuff earlier. It's it's really cool. It's very oh, like yeah. ink ink focused. Yeah. I love that. Uh, let's find some of the it's more so like loose yet controlled. Like there's such a. I always, oh God, I'm like I, getting sweaty just like thinking about drawing with ink, I not know, digitally, right? and there's so many lines and they all, like. You know, anytime I start adding lines like that, I'm always terrified I'm gonna just overline the piece and it's gonna 
get all muddy and flat and they're just like they clearly know what they're doing yeah i mean they've got like such a good knowledge of like light and shadow yeah. with respects to like this hatching art style yeah and hatching is something that i don't mess with but i really no. like the look of i try i try and do it sometimes on stream and i'm always like nope that didn't <laughs> didn't didn't do it didn't do it how i wanted yeah these are like really cool and there's a lot the, here that i don't know how to do i love the blue pencil and uh and and black ink look yeah there's so much going on but it doesn't feel busy like there's such a an understanding of like the piece as a whole and where to add those little scratches yeah there's a lot of clarity there's phoebe bridgers there's what, phoebe what are you bridgers. doing here phoebe bridgers you're supposed to be singing <laughs> she took okay, a brief think... break to take a, a photo i think i want to look at one of these like architectural ones yeah that's so cool i want to check that's this a, one out it's such a pleasing composition dang and we'll have to keep in mind that this is sort of at an angle that this photo is taken so right but that's okay man let's make you make you big yeah again like the thing to remember with any of these artists that you're you're trying to learn from is like they did so much work to get to this point and so yeah. you know always always something to strive for like as you're as you're borrowing ideas and and concepts from them just remember that like you still got to put in the the time as well so i think what what stands out to me here is this rock formation yeah and like i'm really i don't know a lot about doing rock formations so i want to try to like get at what makes this work as like an organic shape and so i think instead of locking the layer <laughs> so it's like photoshop and clip studio have their new layer buttons and their alpha lock buttons like in reversed places so i it's click the fun. wrong one every time no matter which program <laughs> i'm using i cry every time i cry every time <laughs> so i want to like zoom out a bit so i can see sort of what i what looks like the bigger shapes to me yeah um so the first thing i notice is this bone shape right here oh it does look like a bone well bone shape and that's kind of like a main shape and that seems to be like slotted in it's Goofy's hat. It's Goofy's hat. Oh my God. It's like slotted into this other shape here. So this is something I recommend doing if you have a complicated image like this, like zooming out or squinting your eyes and seeing like, what are the big shapes that I see? And there's no like wrong answer here. You're trying right. to break it down in a way that makes sense to you. So like, this is what I see, but you could break it down in a different way and you wouldn't be like wrong. But that's like what jumps out to me is the three main shapes of it. I think that looks right to me. And so then we can get in a little bit deeper and see like, like how do we think he's deciding on where these other lines go? And that's the tricky part for me. Yeah. Because I don't know. <laughs> Because I always get hung up on like detail, like rock detail. Yeah. So let's see. We got like, if we break down the shapes even further, because I think that's ultimately what it comes down to. It's like big shapes that break down into more complicated shapes. I'm seeing like this one here. I'm seeing this one that overlaps here. Then we got this guy here. All right, I think I'm gonna start with this left one here because this is like the simplest one. Yeah. 
So first and foremost, we got moss up top. Yeah, we got some sort of organic stuff happening. So that kind of has that bit covered and that's like a staple on all of these. Yeah. There's like moss or like grass on top of every rock formation here. And then we got these lines that kind of like follow the contours of the shapes. So like we got, th these are like hatched, but I'm going to do them as solid lines for the sake of simplicity. Yeah. We got this one that comes down and like around and then meets up with the outside line. And they all kind of do that. This one comes and meets up with the outside line. This one meets up with the outside line. This one comes around this way and meets up. They all like follow the flow of this like cylindrical object. This one kind of goes up this way. And so that's kind of like the outside shapes here come from the outside and then wrap around and go up to give like that twisting feeling. Yeah. And then we got this one that starts on more of the right side of the rock and it's headed out this other way down over here along with this one that meets up with the outside. So it's twisting away from like these points in both directions. And then this one, since it kind of reaches the middle, goes from twisting to the right to twisting back to the left. So it's almost like if you think of it as like, like each side having like a gravitational pull. Yeah. And it like wants to pull these lines from their origin points up top to whichever side they're closest to. That seems to be like some sort of thing that's yeah. happening here, at least on this rock. Yeah, there's like a... It's like pulling out and down. Yeah. And they're doing little twisties where like they don't... None of them are perfectly parallel with each other. They all, they all look like they would intersect if they were allowed to continue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. They all kind of like... They get closer to each other and then further. I think yeah. that makes it look more organic. Yeah. When they're not perfectly parallel. Because, you know, you're thinking about rocks. These are things that have been around for for a while and they're they're being worn down by the elements. And so there's no there's no set way that the, the wind or the rain is gonna is gonna hit these rocks. And so it just it forms these these irregular shapes, but they all still follow the basic shape of, of whatever the, the thing is. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think here is where like another point I want to drive home when you're doing this sort of practice is it's okay to like, I picked the simplest rock to look at. When I look at this, my brain says, no, <laughs> my brain says, I don't know what's going on there. I don't know how to, that's too many. That's too many. And I think that that's okay. Like if there are parts that are too complicated for your current level of understanding, you don't have to go after those right away. Yeah. You can, you, yeah. you, you want to focus on the bits that you feel like are just above your current understanding or skill level. Yeah. You want to like reach a little bit. You don't want to reach too high and like strain yourself. Yeah. Cause then you'll, you'll get discouraged cause it's not going to. You shouldn't shouldn't start with the whole ocean. No, don't know? start with the whole ocean. Maybe just start, a wave or a just, rock. Just one wave or one rock. Yeah, you know. Because I I really like I really like if you if you get rid of the um, the underdrawing and just show. I like how that looks. I like the way I like your interpretation of that one. It's like it's different from his, but it like it follows the same basic idea. And it's still, you know, it's got your own Jacoby quality to it too. Yeah, and if, I think that's important if I saw too. You, if I saw you add that to one of your pieces, I'd be like, "Ooh, Jacob's trying something new," but it still feels like, still feels like him, you know. I mean, here here's the secret, y'all viewers. It's always gonna feel like you. Yeah, you can't get away from it. People shouldn't be asking, how do I find my style? They should be asking, how do I escape my style? And yeah, the answer is possible. you can't.
you can't freaking do it you can't freaking do it it's there it's part of you forever um okay i think we'll uh we'll we'll jump on to the next one then yeah because i want to focus on this class on on simple ways to learn without stressing yourself out yeah so like you know you, you do a little bit you do a little bit of each one and then we're and then we're putting it away we're not getting lost in the reads here um okay let's see we had some other viewer requests uh zandrew burt wanted to check out um Cipri tree Bo, uh, oh, as well as as well as onsta wow and we can do both of those i think that onsta will be good to look at some color and Friends of the show and Bo, Bo's work is so cool let's take a look So oh, Bo's man. got a like loosey goosey style. I remember the one that I was looking at. I mean, I love all the Elden Ring fan art, of course. And like, look at the shapes in this cloak. Yeah. They're almost like the shapes in the rock I just drew. Yeah. So something I might analyze in this one is probably the cloak shape and also the, 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 the ink the armor shading ink. on the armor. Yeah. Um, but then I was looking at this Ronnie and, and Bo so kindly did a zoom in here. Like, look at how loosey goosey this is. Yeah. It's like splotchy and like sort of undefined. But when you look yeah. at it as a, as a piece, obviously this is a more finished version than the other one, but even still it's like, so much of it is left simple. Yeah. Like the colors aren't blended at all. It's all like blocks of shading. Yeah, very posterized. Sort yeah. Of, sort of look. That's really and, nice. And that's so cool because like when I, whenever I try to do colors like this, I think I tend to want to over refine it. Yeah. And you see something like this, you're like, wow, I don't, I don't have to. I'm wasting my time. Yeah. Got some Kiryu's, got some, some hot women. Princess Mononoke. So much cool stuff. Oh, there's Dancer of the Boreal Valley, Dark Souls 3. <clears throat> they dancing. They dancing. All right, which piece should we look at here? Up to you, dude. It's your class. It's my class. Yeah. Why don't we take a look at this Ronnie? The dang lunar witch. Yeah. Ronald. Ronald. Ronald Elden Ring. And what do I want to look at here? What do you want to look at? There's so much. I feel like I want to look at how some of these, like, the co the contours and the colors are done. Like, how is Bo choosing, like, where to put these colors? Yeah. We got some great, some great shapes yeah. happening with the colors. I'm particularly drawn to like this area, like the fabric over the legs. Yeah. So I'm going to shut you shut your mouth Photoshop. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to isolate that. Yeah. Computer isolate. When you, when you just look at that, you're like, I bet those are the only hands this person has. <laughs> <laughs> little do you know <laughs> i bet if if i saw the rest of this person one thing i wouldn't see more hands guess what idiot you'd be, you'd be so wrong um so i think what More i'm like, going to try to do is just sort of i want like to wrong me look at the nice nathan thank you <laughs> one thing i like to do as someone who is colorblind is look at the actual colors people are picking Look at them hex codes. Because I go 
too saturated on basically everything I do because that's the only way I can see the colors good. But then I see other people's work and I'm like, wow, it's so vibrant. It's so beautiful. And then I look at the freaking colors. Look at this. That's like gray. That's gray. That one's even gray. more gray. Why does it look so blue in the context? This one, that's nearly gray. white and it's also in the pinks. That was, what's going on here? And I always wonder this. Yeah. Very desaturated. Super desaturated. Why does it look? Limited, limited color palette. Like if so. we look back here, it looks like, I would describe it as like a colorful piece. Like it's, yeah. like the blues seem so deep and it seems so, it really pops. Yeah. yeah. Where's, where is the, like the most saturated? Is it the, the blue on the, uh, on the underside of the hat? That sort of bright blue. This one? No, or this like one. The, the lighter, uh, or this one. that one, yeah. This one's pretty, oh, that one's yeah. full on. Okay, so that's... Full on saturated. That's the most saturated, and then... And the, the yeah. dark colors are pretty saturated as well. Yeah. In like the Got background it. here, as we look around, they're all in like the bottom right, except for the stars, of course. Yeah. And then the water too, hi, Olive. Okay, so this is something interesting to like take note of here. In this piece, the background almost entirely in the bottom right quadrant. This is something I really need to learn. Yeah, the background is dark and saturated and the foreground is, is light and desaturated. Light and desaturated and it creates a really cool effect. And like that's what's making it pop, not because the colors are super saturated. It's because of the discrepancy between the lights and the darks of the piece. Yeah. Yeah, because again, even even the darks on, like if you go back to the, um, like the shadows on the, uh, yeah, like that's I think the most saturated blue, the most saturated color in the zone that you selected. Is yeah. Gonna be. That's the only one to the right of the. Of that middle line. Of that middle. Yeah, everything else yeah, is, right. is, in the, is in the gray zone. So there seems to be like a unspoken rule of this piece that as the colors get darker, they become more saturated. Yeah. And That's then like underneath the hat here, yeah, it's everything sort of follows this, this like with the line. with the ex the exception being that light blue on the underside of the hat, which yeah. creates this like cool glow effect. And I guess that's why it does that is because it breaks the, the color flow of the piece, so it like pops. Yeah. Yeah, the under hat blues. You're you're totally right. That's so cool. That's really cool. Because see now, if if you're watching this and you're wondering like what well, how do I use this information, what I would do and what I probably will do on our next speed draw is like, okay, well, I want to try to do a piece where all of my background is down here, all of my foreground is up here. And then I got one over here, one color over here. Yeah. And I want to try to do that and just like see how it works for me if I make that attempt. Hell yeah, you should. And that's not something I would do normally because it's like against my, my normal proclivities because of my non-functional eyeballs. <laughs> but that excuse only works for so long. When I got when I can look and see the exact range that people use, it's like, okay, I can, you can do it. I can do it. I just have to pick things that is similar. Yeah. All right. Now let's come back here. Let's take a look at this. Cause I want to just like sort of get at some of these shapes. It even, you know, it might make it like easier in some respects because you're just thinking about it in terms of where it is on the, on the little, the little picker. And it's, you're not being, you're not being confused by your eyes because your eyes are just like, mm, what do you want? Yeah, you might be right. There might be some benefits to it. You can, you can see it more purely as just like, okay, well, I'm just, I'm just going to go with what it says. So I'm just going to do a quick little color sketch here to sort of reinforce. Yeah. The, what we're learning about this. It's a mushroom. 
we're just going to make like a base here and i'm just basing this on like really loosely on the shapes that i'm seeing over here so the the goal of this is not to be perfect it's just to to get just, some of this information in my in my gourd just, just trying it out so then like the stuff on top has this lighter color and it kind of goes down like this This is such an interesting painting style to me. Yeah. It's one that I would be like scared to do. And then we you got just, one even lighter color in smaller you just areas. Pick a little a little section of it and give it a go. And then you don't have to be as scared. What are you what are you so afraid of? You a baby? Yeah. What's the matter, Jacob? Are you a baby? Yeah, you little baby, you little scared you, of, of colors. Scared, little, be scared of doing colors. And there's like this even lighter color that kind of hits in all the light spots. And I mean, this doesn't you know look like anything what I'm doing here, but this is like when I tried matter. to paint the ocean. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're just, try, I'm, you're I'm just learning trying the it. colors. I'm not learning the. You're just splotching it in the shapes. And there's even darker ones where the shadows fall. There's a car backing up outside for like the hundredth time this morning. So enjoy that. Enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy your, your car concept. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> and then they've got like legs. They're coming out of here. So yeah, like this is not really anything, but, and then we got like a bit of this color over here too, where it's the only other colors go into this like purplish, purplish pinkish territory. Yeah. Makes it kind of stand out while still being cool toned. Cool tone. Yeah, cool tone, bro. Like, the range is from like the cyan to like pink. Yeah. And everything in between is fair game. Bless you. Excuse me. Pardon me. What you can also do with, you know, pieces like this is make a make your own swatches. Yeah, that's just a nice little palette. And then just try to make a piece with the same uh the same swatches to them. So there's lots of ways you can learn from stuff like this. Uh, okay, let's move on. Let's move on. I'm done with that. I'm sick of it. I'm just now very much looking forward to you doing a, a speed draw with that that idea. I hope I dark, remember to do that. Dark saturated background, light desaturated foreground, and one light saturated element. It's, it's a cool idea. We're going to take a look at some Monsta. Let's look at Onsta. And oh, something yeah. that I always want to look at with Onsta is the freaking eyes. Yeah, she gets so much happening in there. And Onsta, like me, in, does enjoy the saturated colors. Yeah. And I enjoy that Onsta uses the saturated colors. And also, obviously, a stylistic trademark of Onsta is the... Uh, the stars everywhere. The stars and the glows and like the post-processing effects that make it look like a holographic card. So cool. Which I think is so rad because I love they, holographic cards. They just like, she's able to put so much in there and not make it feel overcrowded. Like yeah. It all, it all works because she's, she's got a, a sense of the, the piece as a whole and all those elements work together. All right. So I think I'm going to look... Let's get this one with Sonic, maybe. Love the halftone on this one. Oh, yeah. I just love halftone. It's cool. It's cool. Or maybe effect. I'll come with, with... Oh, that's a moving image. It's moving. <laughs> oh, Anza, you got to be still. I have to... Anza, can you hold still, please? <laughs> I'm trying to draw your eyes. <laughs> I'm trying to gaze into your eyes. Okay, we'll go with this one, because I want to look at how she's doing the eyeballs. Yeah. There's the the anime eyeballs. There's so many different shines in there. We, we're not going to dull your shine. 
Okay, so we can really take a look at this here. We can break yeah. this down. I'm going to isolate the eye. Grant me eyes on the inside. Big eye. No, get out of here, Zoom. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a look at this. What's what's the colors used? What's the shapes used? Let's get it all. So I'm going to draw an eye, believe it or not. I believe it. And again, something I want to reinforce. Um, it's important to remember like when you're working on something like this, like what the purpose of what you're working on is. So like, I don't need to draw a perfect eyeball. That doesn't matter. That's not the practice. No. I just need a vessel in which to place the information that I'm trying to learn, which is the colors and like where they're placed. Yeah. That's what I want to learn most of all. So, you know, don't, don't get too hung up in like the details if um, it's not what you're focusing on at the moment. So we're just going to do this. Make a nice eyeball. Great. Because that's like a pretty ugly eyeball, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. And I'd say it kind of actually goes maybe more up. Right. Because the certainly there's like a, a, a black shadow around yeah. the the shine. There sure is. That's like a that's like a a, a painting shading uh, general guide, which is that the the darkest part of your painting is, is very often going to be right next to the lightest part. Yeah, that's true. For contrast, Nathan, that's true. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's make a swatch. The darkest color in the eye aside from black is this dark blue, very saturated. So we're going to put that here. Then it goes into this pinkish Magenta. reddish color. Yeah. Again, very saturated. And then we got this orange highlight which is very saturated, but not as much. So I'd be interested to actually see. Um, and each of each of the the highlights also have, besides the white one, there's like a light blue one and a, a less saturated, darker blue one, and then a light orange one. Yeah, totally. And these three colors are kind of all sort of in a vertical-ish line on like the right half of the, the saturation of the color picker. And it looks like that, um, that orange one and the, the pink one are also sort of reflected in the, the skin tone as well. Like they're, they're reflecting the light that's bouncing off of the, the yeah. skin into the eye. That's a good point. The orange in the eye does look like it is reflecting this skin tone underneath which is a little bit of a darker version of that orange. More of a, more of a salmon. More of a salmon. Or a, co or a coral. So then I'll, I'll collect these highlights. This one goes over the blue. This one goes over the orange. The, the magenta doesn't get a highlight. Sorry, magenta. No. And then this no, one goes, goes over, over the, the black. Let's actually just, well, is this even black? No. Not quite. It's very dark blue. So yeah. it shows what I know. And then that's got this going on. So this gives you a nice little indicator as to like what you're working with here. Get all your tools set out. Yeah. And then we're going to give it a give it a try. Give it a go. So what I would probably do is lay down this blue first. Not like that. There we go. 
we'll get that in there. And then I would lay down the, the magenta color, which kind of cuts through like this. And then the orange at the bottom. See, I would just never think to use like these three colors together on like, the same eye. eye. Yeah. On, on my own, I would not think of it. This is why we need. Yeah. It'd be like, what color is their eye? Is it blue? Is yeah. It, then I'll is use blue. Orange? <laughs> yeah. I'll use a light blue and a dark blue. But, or I'll use a blue and then I'll use a multiply layer to make part of it darker. <laughs> yeah. And that's pretty white. So we'll put a white. And then we got these highlights. I have to add those later because of the way I did it. We can do these though. So highlights up here. And then I will do another layer on top of the inks layer. So we can get in these. That didn't work. Let me let me try again. There it is. There it is. And then we also have like a white right here that really, if you want to draw the attention to something using the pure white, a little bit of the pure white, yeah, that really pulls the eye right towards it. So that light, that this light is, orange right at the bottom. Oh yeah, the light orange at the bottom, you're right. Is it for, yeah, light orange, yellowy that color. Goes. That goes here. So there this is. is kind of a dookie version of the good eye that Ansa <laughs> did. But again, like that's not the point. The point, the point is, is to is like to... understand these colors and the way they're ordered. Yeah, it goes from like cool to warm, top to bottom, but then each zone has like little little highlights within it but none of those highlights are as bright as the main highlight yeah because yeah that's like your eyes are these wet globes in your head <laughs> this is what you need to remember they're just they're just these wet things and if you want something to look wet it's like it's reflecting light from all different sources in addition to whatever the main light source is there's like this diffusion that happens that I don't I don't understand physics well enough to fully understand how it works but if but you, you ever you look don't at, need to know physics if you ever look at just like water or something that's wet it's got it's got a bunch of highlights on it it, it sure does. shiny yeah and it's, it's like it's reflecting and refracting and doing all sorts of nasty stuff and knowing where to place those highlights is is a crucial part of doing something like an eyeball as something Ansta is really good at yeah um and also it's like we don't know the process Ansta used in doing this so it's like it's entirely possible that like this highlight and this highlight and this highlight are just on like a like a soft light or hard light layer. Oh, true. And that they're like the same color. Yeah. Like, let's see if we make a, you put them on the same layer. If we, if I do that one more time, we make like a soft light layer. Can I please, I'm begging you. <laughs> see, that's not quite bright enough. Maybe a hard light layer. That's too bright. Yeah, yeah, it's a little too gray also. But there are like Yeah. You know, ways know, maybe, to Yeah, maybe she just color picked it all. Unclear. Could be, could be an overlay. We got to get we got to get on a draw class. <laughs> yeah, you teach it. You do you it. You teach it, Ansta. I don't know. I'm not you. I don't know. We're just we're just guessing. I'm just guessing. I just we're like just your colors, some, okay? We just we just like it. Calm down. <laughs> Onsta, please. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Move on, Sta. 
Let's move on to. Uh, the next one we're gonna look at. This was another one from um, Nepe, who suggested we look at uh, Rika Paints, which I did. I did follow. Rika Alvinen, Finnish artist. Ooh. Very watercolory. Yeah, dude. And just so That's it's just so it looks pleasant. so nice. That's just mm. looks so nice. God. It pisses me oh. off. Oh. <laughs> so cute. Some excellent April O'Neil. Yeah. Along with the sketches, which you always like to see. Yeah, the way, and I guess her stuff is like all physical watercolors. Yeah, jeez. Watercolors lovely. are so nice, and I'm so bad at them. <laughs> at least yeah. like digitally, I've not yet figured out how to make it work for me. Same. But look at these shapes. God damn. Again, very simple shapes. Oh, these hands. And not like a ton of detail. Eyes. Let's go down a bit here. Cause like look at these chickens. That's just they're just blobs. <laughs> but they're so cute. I feel like I've seen you draw chickens like that. I mean, in my if I drew the greatest chicken I've ever drawn, it would look like that. This is such a good scene. Yeah. The the like hue variation in the background. That might be what I want to look at. I think I'll yeah. look at this one. Cuz again, it's going to be it it looks super saturated, but I think we're going to be surprised by like what is actually saturated and what is more of a gray. Yeah, I think it's I think it's not. Oh, I also love this one. That's so really? cool. That's really awesome. Just great composition. Sometimes you can just like look at some art, you know, while you're doing this. Sometimes you can just take a moment and just be like, dang, that rules. That's I do that all the time. Because it does rule. <laughs> Maybe my next draw class, I, I won't draw anything. I'll just look at art and be like, wow, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> dang you see this you see in this whoa whoa cool all right let's let me try to find like a watercolor brush this, this reminds me of a color palette that i we we looked at i took a i took a, a digital coloring class at sva like a few years ago i guess more than a few years ago at this point but like we were looking at this um uh artist who does a lot of co cover art for the the comic series fables oh yeah and it was like a very similar color palette to this or it looked similar i don't know if it it had a similar effect i, I can't speak to whether or not the the actual uh hex codes are the same but it's very let's, sort of let's like take a look at this color palette let's take a look at this one because i i suspect it's like it seems really limited i in a I way a that's really effective my prediction is the 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 saturated reds are gonna be like saturated and basically everything else is gonna be not so saturated i think you're right i bet this apron is pretty saturated though oh yeah in like the darkest parts yeah you right like a deep yellow let's take a look at all the colors in this apron yeah it's like all greenish yellow to orange but in in like the sort of bottom right quadrant which is interesting because like when they're i mean when you're you're painting with with watercolor you're not thinking about like saturation the way that we are in in digital no they're just like how how's it look how much i guess how much water do i add? i don't know how you like you're just mixing you're just blending and mixing the the, the, the paints on but your i palette. think this this will be a good example of how like 
we know for a fact that the way that she made this piece is different than how we're going to be analyzing it because we're not yeah. doing physical watercolors but you can still learn just as much even if it's not the same tool set to get there yeah so let's take a look here this this is actually more saturated than i expected this orange yeah so we got like Shut the Photoshop. You're such a piece of shit. <laughs> we got like this orange color that shows up a lot. Yeah, it's like a reddish orange. Yeah, because it's More. like on the, on this, it's on this, it's on the tentacle up here, all in this reddish orange. And it even shows up in the background, a lighter yeah. version of it in like yeah. little splotches. Kind of gives it like an ethereal glowing effect. Yeah. And then the second primary color used here is this extremely desaturated green. Yeah. So it's like an orange and, and turquoisey green. Right. It's such color a cool palette. effect where you, you have this like super desaturated bluish green color and then you put it next to this more saturated orange and it just makes everything have this like very blue feel even though it's more more of a gray than it is uh, any other yeah thing. but it does like look it looks like a brighter color because of the, its proximity to the orange you're right yeah it really makes the blue look blue or yeah and then of it's course cool there's effect. like a lot of variation in here too like there's some spots where it gets more blue spots where it gets more yellow and Hello, green yeah. so really it seems like instead of a two-tone palette it's like a two range palette you've got like the orange to red range like this range here yeah and then like this green to blue or yellow to blue even range yeah that's being used yeah like a, a red to orange, orange, red, saturated range, and then a yellow to blue desaturated, desaturated range. Yeah. And then, and then the apron is very saturated, but dark. And this is, this is interesting to me. If we look at this stove. Yeah. That's like a brown. On top of it is like brown, but then on the sides, it jumps up to that bluish green. Yeah. Those are like two very different colors, but they look like the same in this piece, like as part of the same object. Right. Because it's not as red of an orange as the other oranges. So that yellowy orange doesn't feel as, it's, you know. Yeah. It's kind of crazy too, because like the top and the sides are near the same like saturation and um and like brightness level it's like delineating it with color rather than with with light and shadow yeah which i would not think to do like that that's very cool that's a cool tech that's some cool tech right there yeah Try delineating it with light and shadow, why don't you? All right, what what else should we look at here? I really, whoop, goodbye. These like, I wanna try and like replicate some of this background stuff. Do it. That's going on. Cause like, again, I know that like the process is really different how, how she would have done it. But let's like start with just like this. But like I love the look of like the the splotches of color that bleed yeah, into each I could, other. I could see you doing like a a background like this, and then have some real like sort of flat images over top. Could could create a cool effect. Yeah, I think we're gonna like just get some of these in here, and then maybe try to like blend them together use a little blender brush see how that works for us i'm excited i don't know how it's going to work for us no but... me, me neither I don't, I don't do 
I don't really mess with blender brushes in in Photoshop too often. I don't really I find, either. I find the CSP blender brushes to make more sense to my brain, but even still, I don't really understand what's happening there. But I, I in Photoshop, it just I don't I don't get I don't get what's happening usually when I use a blender brush. Let's try it. Yeah, I'm just trying to find. I see there's like an oil blender. That's not what I want. That's not gonna that's not gonna have the effect that we want. Let's check out maybe in um wet media, wet blender, Kyle. Oh Kyle, your wet Thank blender. You. Thank you, Kyle. I think that's gonna be what we're looking for yeah. here. Yeah. So maybe if we take like a soft approach here. Ooh. See yeah, if we can't like blend it out a bit. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. That's working quite well, actually. I think. Thank you, Kyle. Kyle. Oh my God, Kyle. Let's, let's make it big. Big blend, and we'll just kind of go around everything here. Yeah. Yeah. So this is all just like stuff, you know. You'd, you're seeing us mess around like without knowing the result. And that's like part of something that can be really enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, about art. If you let yourself just like try stuff out. Yeah, let's try to blend this in a little more. Yeah. Cause we're not, you know, we're not making the piece on the left anymore. We're, we're using that piece to inspire this, this color palette. And then we're just like, can we even get close to that effect in digital? It's like kind of a little bit. Kind of. I mean, it's different. It's not the it's, same, but it's yeah, it's cool. <laughs> we don't we don't have any of that that sort of paper texture underneath that like nice wet paper or canvas, whatever she was working on. No, but we could like. I guess the blender is a smudge tool, huh? Interesting. Yeah. We can like apply a paper texture to this. But yeah, I always, cause I. That's so. Cool. I do still, I do still want to work on like backgrounds more and like having more fun, interesting painterly backgrounds on like even more cartoony pieces. I think adds a a fun effect. Yeah, me too. I really need to work on it. I've not been working on like anything lately. There's a lot happening. <laughs> always yeah <laughs> i've been using my spare time to like lay face down yeah um but this uh, is this is cool though yeah i'm glad i'm i i really do appreciate that draw class like forces us to you know we have to keep learning so that we keep having stuff to to teach yeah because like i i feel like i'm out of stuff i'm like you get like Every draw class that I host from now on is is basically just going to be me trying to figure something out in real time <laughs> along with y'all. Y'all ever seen lines? Y'all know about lines? Um, uh, uh, this, um, uh, cir uh, circles? Draw in circles. Shape shapes. Um, okay, I think yeah. we're going to move on to the next one. But this this is cool. I feel like this little technique is something I want to remember and yeah. like try to use. I would love to try and do a full piece with watercolors. We'll we'll see about that. We're getting I wonder if she like a whole whole year's worth of uh, speed draw uh, uh, inspiration from this one one draw class. Yeah. I wonder if the fine lines she uses what she uses for the fine lines. If it's also a watercolor or might be a watercolor pencil. I just don't know how watercolor works. Yeah, yeah, it seems scary and just, hard. Like the the white lines could even just be like like a scritch into the paint. Could like be. When the, when the when the paint is I don't know if it's when it's wet or when it's dry. You do little scritches and then you get that paper tone underneath. 
little scr scratchy you're just, you're scratchies. Just, you're just removing the paint at that point. Shit is those. beautiful, dog. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. Y'all y'all know about some some cool artists. Well, now we're on to ones that that I picked. Is that Mifa? That's Mifa. Is that Mifa? That's Mifa. Wow. That's Mifa. Look, that's <laughs> that's Zelda and, and Linky. Wow. That's Damn. Mifa. Mifa. That and then they they keep coming back to the chickens. I love those chickens so much. Mifa Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Have to go. <laughs> no, I'm I'm getting a different artist. We're gonna go in a different direction now. Okay. This is an artist I found recently, Machine Gamu. This shit is so sick. It's Ooh. all um all inks. Yeah. Like it's like anime by way of medieval etching style. That's cool. And I love you if you know me, you know I love black and white. Lots of chainsaw man. Is that a dokebi over there? Dokebi? Was Dokebi? What's her name? Oh, is that her name? I don't remember anyone's name. My God, now I feel like an idiot. Some of this is a little on the, the horny side, but the freaking line work is insane. It's so cool. So I really want to like break down some of these these lines is basically where I'm at. Kobeni. Kobeni. Not even close, dude. Not even close. You sound so stupid right I now. I sound like a, I shouldn't talk. Can you just f shut up? <laughs> Can you just like shut up? Okay. Like just shut. Can you just could What am I what am I thinking of? I don't know. I don't know why my brain. There is like a that. game coming out called Dokebi, I think. Okay, so I just my brain just was like, you don't know, you're a fake anime fan. Oh God. I think this one. No, I think I want to do this one. Yeah. Lots of lines there. It's literally. Okay. We're going in the opposite direction. What are you saying, Nathan? I'm just tr trying to teach myself to the right words. <laughs> trying to teach myself the right words. Okay, so what cool? I want to look at here, I feel like we need a we need a thin ink brush. Maybe like a like a classic cartoonist will make it really thin. even thinner. I need to go even thinner. I need some smoothing. It's like, it's one thing to not remember the name, but like to, to have such confidence that I did remember the name and then just say completely the wrong thing. <sighs> Nathan, we all say the wrong thing. And You're the, the one who thing. didn't get, I got plenty of sleep last night. I have no excuse. It's fine. It's it doesn't matter. None of this matters. You know there are people. I just I feel bad wrong. when I when I get someone's name wrong. Even That's if a they fictional are a real person. person. Yeah, but she's. I like her. She's not real. She's just lines. But I want what's I want what's best for her. She, nothing is best for her. She's lines. I, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm just going for this like shoulder shape here. That's a good shape. Which I, I can already tell I did not lean it enough. No. So we're going to try to lean it more. This is Machine this. Gamu. Machine Gamu. Machine Gamu Kelly. I did I did remember that. Actually, Nathan, it's Kobeni. Shit. Nathan, it's L. Nathan. I activated her. <laughs> Julia. Hi, Julia. She can't Nathan hear me. 
Okay, so here's what I'm looking at here, so I don't get into just drawing in silence. Yeah. You're looking this at is that like, shape. This is like the inking on this is really rough. It looks clean when you're zoomed out. When yeah. you're zoomed in, it's actually really rough. It looks like they're using one size of brush and then just like doing multiple lines when they want it to be thicker. Like in the outside parts here. Like you can see all the line scritches there. So maybe they're using like an actual like pen, like a micron. Yeah. It looks like a micron to me. Or they're like, you know, uh, emulating a micron, you might say. So we're just going to, and this doesn't have to be perfect. Just want to get some of the shape here. Because another thing, aside from learning how to do colors better, another thing I want to get better at is um, inking, like shading with just like black and white, like that heavy black shading, I think is so yeah. cool. Yeah. So we're just going to try to get a little bit of that. Yeah, it's, it's all, I love how many, like they look like tones, like how many tones you get just from using black and white when you use the the hatching versus like the thick yeah the thick black you can get so much gradation all right so we're going to try to emulate some of these thin lines is this this isn't official chainsaw man art is it this no. is just like really it's just fan art con yeah convincing fan art yeah like if you told me this was a panel from the comic i'd believe it uh honestly this person's has a bit is a bit better of an artist than the artist of chainsaw man <laughs> uh, in terms of like pure like action and pose fluidity of motion chainsaw man's artist who i adore uh can be a bit stiff sometimes i i find mm -hmm. this artist is is not stiff they are very yeah. fluid um, even though each individual line is so just like Eh. but together because they're, they're like, so short none yeah. of the none of the lines are particularly long like they're they're like no. in these sort of like they form these these rows yes yeah, so i'm like trying to it's figure so out cool. they like almost connect to each other sometimes they overlap a little it looks like and then it and seems like these, they like, just want to follow the contour of the yeah, shape just like That's so cool. That's you need so much patience. I feel like to draw this way. Yeah, that's the. As soon as I start doing it again, I'm like, that's why I don't do it. Yeah, it takes a long time me, and it's hard. Give me a brush. Give me a brush that does this. It won't be as good, but it'll. I'll, at least I'll be done. And like my lines, when I do it, they don't look as good. Mm -hmm. They're like not as no. tight. They're not as parallel. No. no, you're fucking this dude. Look, it looks like ass. <laughs> it's not even close. It's not even close. <laughs> <laughs> it's freaking embarrassing. <laughs> all you, all you want, are you just you just picked one section of the drawing to do, and it's just like, yeah, you can get you you got it. Could it's not gonna it. be it, but like. You can try. I can try and I can fail in, in front of thousands of people. Not right now, but later it will be. It'll be. It'll, it will be. It's okay. Everyone's going to be focused on the fact that I, I didn't remember Kobeni's name. So no one's even going to notice these lines. I mean, I'll say this right now. Um, if you're watching this and you're seeing me do a bad job at this, I, I bet you can't do any better. <laughs> and if you can do better, I want to see it. Prove me wrong, children. Prove me wrong. I want to see. Prove me wrong. Yeah, man, this is so tedious. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes what you learn in, in doing stuff like this is that it's not how you want to draw. I think it's so <laughs> cool, though. It looks really cool, but I would never...
But God, I would never. It just takes so much time. They did it so many times. They did it way more times. It, I've only done it a few times. They and did I'm it, tired. They did it. They did it for this whole guy and then the whole background. Look at this door. That door. I was about to. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> How did they decide? Come on. How did they decide where to start doing it on the door? They like made the door mostly black and were like, you know what? I'm just going to make more work for myself just for the bottom of this door. And, and it like, looks great. Look at this, this bit here, this shaded bit. You can tell that even the black is just made up of individual lines. Like they didn't paint fill any part of that. And is th this is again non-digital also so they don't they didn't well, i don't know if it is i don't know if it's non-digital i'd believe it Let's i see believe they did that without without an undo button any evidence i dislike color that's fair i also often dislike color oh there's some color down here little splashes of color yeah little half -tone. you can tell that they Work. You can tell that they dislike it. This is like at least digital in part. Yeah. Because it's, um, there's halftone added. But if you look at the lines on like the fingers, it looks like a real micron. Yeah, it really does. It's either a really good digital brush or they're just a freaking champ at drawing traditionally. I can read their FAQ. Oh yeah, what's their FAQ? FAQ. F FAQ. Show me the FAQ. Will you draw my manga? No. <laughs> Do you take commissions? No. NFTs? No. When did you start drawing my entire life? How much do you draw per day? At least one hour. Okay, so it is a program. Medibang Paint Pro. Okay. The Mapping Pen and G-Pen 2. And then here's the settings for the brushes, even. Okay. So if you okay. use Medibang Paint Pro and you want to draw like this, here's the settings those are the, and the brushes. Those are the settings. Wow. So there you go. Jamie, good call reading the FAQ. Okay. The Qs, the Qs we were Aing are, are F. Yeah, they're F. Are, are, they're, they're FAs. Yeah, it turns out our Qs, not very unique Qs. Yeah. They're, they're F Qs. Uh, okay, let's let's do another one, huh? Um, who do I want to do next? I've got one on here, um, Nathan, that you're familiar with. Ooh, it's our boy Max Greca. Oh yeah, because I keep seeing his art in Marvel Snap. Yeah, and I love his variants. And Max can, Greca's work is so tell... cool. You can tell a Max Greca from the teeths and the rim lighting. Yeah. And, and the, the, cool the shapes. Shapes. The freaking shapes. And and what I find so impressive about Max Greca's work is that like the painterly stuff is like so well done, of course. But then the the freaking line work cell shading stuff is all that's animated. Yeah. It's like he's better at, at everything than me. Yeah. He's better at what I focus the most on and better yeah. at something I've hardly ever done. Yeah. Isn't that messed up? I just love, I love the like hyper detailed, like painterly style on these like incredibly exaggerated cartoony forms. It yeah. It's such, it's so like, I don't, you don't, you don't see that very often. Like a, a person that's, you know, drawn like a cartoon character, but rendered like a painting and it makes it look like a, makes it look like a sculpture. I know. It's so cool. Kind of. And like the composition on these pieces. Yeah. So sick. Look at this Luffy. Look at this Luffy. It looks like this Luffy did a frame break. 3D. I just got to diamond. Shiny logo. Shiny logo is so funny. 
I could just look at Max Greca's work. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't he didn't even post his uh his snap variants. I guess he probably isn't allowed to. Yeah. But Let's take a look at this guy. Look at this guy. Cuz I want to I want to examine the the forms on these muscles, these muscles. <laughs> yeah. Sun's out, mullet's out is the <laughs> caption for that one. Look at that chonky belt. Zoom. Move the menu, Zoom. Come on, Zoom. Come on, Zoom. Zoom has been really... Hey, Zoom. ...giving it to me today. Yeah. In a way that I don't appreciate. I also love that Max is not afraid to draw the nipple. No. Embrace the nipple, much yeah. like Jonah has asked for... Yeah. ...in the most recent episode that was most recent as of today when we film this that brow into nose zone is so bang, that's bang, that's, bang, that's such bang. a powerful choice yeah and then to like render it naturalistically yeah i love it i freaking love it yeah that's so cool and like if, if we if we go to shape town on max greca easiest shapes in the business yeah to identify and that's and i love that because i'm shapes nothing gets me going like shapes yeah so let's take a look at some of these shapes the whole head is like you got this line and then it's just like this this is a crazy shape for a head to be <laughs> and then yeah. it's like these bits that jut out yeah, remember earlier when we were drawing lips in profile? That's not going to work for no, this face. That doesn't apply to this. <laughs> no. The ear very shapey. Yeah, because we got a nose to chin line here. But if we look at the upper lip to lower lip, there's not really a lower lip. But it does. But we kind can find of, a, a parallel. It does here. kind of go parallel. Wow. Look at that. Uh, you know, there's something to be said. Yeah. There's something to be said. Wow. And then I like to look at the, the neck shape. Because the neck kind of comes this way and connects into these trapeziuses. Let's get like this shape. That's such a cool shape. I could just do this shit all day. Yeah, dude. Then like the shoulder, because then here's where you can really look at like how the muscles interconnect. They're so like obvious the way he does it. Yeah. It's really easy to see these like bigger shapes of like the bicep and the tricep, this like forearm muscle here, how that fits in with the elbow. And it like cords around the arm. Max Greco is a really good one to study <laughs> just because yeah. like there's no, there's nothing like hiding the underlying shape language. Yeah. So it's just really easy to see the structure. And then like we got the fist that goes like this, thumb, knuckles. Um, Sonic? Like look at look at the shapes in that arm. They're so easy to identify. Yeah. And like I can like it's stuff I can remember too. Where it's like make the shoulder it dips in where the bicep and tricep meet. This forearm thing is something I want to try to remember, but that's really only yeah. for like big muscular forearms. Like mine doesn't I mean it does, but it's not as visible. Yeah, like kind of follows because it's like you got them two bones. You got them two bones in the forearm. Yeah. That like twist around. Well, forearm two bones, they call them. But yeah, I don't know what the muscles are called in the forearm. It's the two bones. It's the two bones. You got two bones, two bones, two beers. And this waist, there's like just a line. You can just see yeah. the line. Yeah. That bisects the top half of the where the rib cage is to the the, the lower little, abs the little poochy bit 
And then these shapes too. It's is crazy. Yeah, you got rib ribus. Like look at this. You got the pecus. You can see how it all just like stacks on top of each other. Yeah. He's got like the kind of work where you look at it and you simultaneously feel like, oh, I feel like I could do that, but also like I could never do this right at the same time. Because like everything's being exaggerated as well. Like he understands the underlying structure well enough that he's able to like exaggerate the things in the correct way that it doesn't feel unnatural or wrong. Like everything's being exaggerated in a very intentional way. Yeah. And we even have like these, um, the pelvic thing here. Yeah. The pelvic thing. Can you tell I don't know the names of muscles and <laughs> bones? I just know what they look like. You got, you got two bones. You got pelvic thing. The pelvic thing. You like got... this hand over here is such a complicated hand angle. Yeah. I don't even know how I would break this down really. Probably just like with the fingers, how they connect. Try to get the joints. Yeah. It's one of those where I'm like, if I had to if I had to do that position on my own, I don't think I'm I don't think I'm skillful enough to do that on my own. Yeah, I would I would hide the thumb. The thumb would not be visible if I was doing this angle. No. It would be like going around the back. Or it would be obfuscate. He would have like a bag there. Yeah. <laughs> and the hand would just not be visible. But Max is like, no. I would just <laughs> scrape that little that whole arm back behind the back a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's get that hand. Let's just get that out of view. Yeah, he's making a fist and it's going this way. Yes. It's just not. <laughs> That's a hundred percent what I would do. But that changes the, the this makes the pose look more a little more relaxed, you know? Yeah. The hand gently caressing. It's like Yeah, it's really cool to draw someone so big and powerful, but like doing sort of a like relaxed pose Whoops. it's just so structural like it all everything fits on top of each other yeah it's like, like, a you're, mech suit. like you're stacking you're stacking it all together yeah it would all stack up and all the pieces fit like a puzzle like a body puzzle like a body puzzle joy did you do a stinky shit that's your that's your ten minute warning on the ten uh, minute warning the stinky shit warning. <laughs> the producer's ten minute <laughs> warning is to make a re a real stinkus in the room. Can you go? <laughs> you don't need to be here. I don't want you to be here. You're so stinky. Go away. <laughs> go away, stinky. Go away, stinky. <laughs> <sighs> she loves it. When she's stinky, she's like, it's my time to shine. Uh, okay, with 10 minutes, we can we can check out one more real quick. That's what I say. Yeah. Yeah, I like that, you know, it's just, it can really just be like, what's, what's one thing that stands out to you about an artist's work? And you just, you know, you you mess around with it for a little while and then you move on. And then you're better for the experience. Yeah. Oh my God, she's back. So this artist, Carlos Dalmau, uh, I wanted to do something a little more on the cartoony side. Yeah. And their work is so cool. It's like so detailed, but so simple. Wow. Big, big food battle. Usually like Just simple happened. characters and then very detailed backgrounds. Yeah. Which uh, the the, pers the perspectives and background detail is something that I s strive to avoid. What can you, what do you want? Go away, go ahead. <laughs> so this to me would be like something I would really need to study. I can enjoy like she's a person. <laughs> she is a person. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a cat. 
And it's a lot of this fish eyeing too. Oh yeah. So I think I'd like to maybe try and examine the fish eye effect. For sure. And see about like how that's how to accomplish that. Definitely. Oh, look at some monster prom. Oh. Really good colors too. Very, very poppy. Yeah. God darn that game is great. Man, why is art so cool? I got I gotta spend more time making art. I, I do too, but am I gonna? I don't know. <laughs> I hope so. Let's let's check out this one. We'll try to analyze the perspective here. Yeah, there's so many fun little guys. We can analyze the perspective and also analyze some fun little guys. I love the I love a piece that like you look at it and you're like, that's cool. And then the longer you look at it, the more you notice. Yeah. Like that fucked up little onion man in the back right or whatever that is. The back left, this one, excuse me. This one is like staring right down the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. It's like not the focal point of the piece at all, but then all of a sudden you notice him and it's just like <laughs> Yeah. What's your story? All right. I want to know the story of all of these characters. Let's see about perspective here. Cause I wonder like how I'd love I'd love to watch a process video. Is the implication see. that the, the person on the left did a barfo? They ate too much and barfed? It looks like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Because a lot of the perspective here seems kind of like loosey goosey. Yeah. But like the line of the table here, it kind of seems like it's bowing outwards. Yeah. From the center point. You got these in the back. And this one comes down this way. And then we got these big swoops. These big swoops around like this. So like I wonder if if they start with like like these types of perspective lines and go from there. Yeah, I don't know. Like I'd be really curious about the process. Maybe they have some process pieces somewhere I I haven't looked. Cuz like if you look at that that shelf in the middle, it's it's bowing way more than the shelves to the right. You mean like this? Uh, no, like up, like the, the oh back. this, like that one. Yeah, is, is doing that, but like it doesn't follow the same perspective yeah, you're line right. as the shelves to the to the right, but it still works. Because everything is kind of like exaggerated. It kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a vibe. It's if like it's the, all this is on. this is how the world feels after you eat too much. You so maybe they just too much have a good sense much. of yeah perspective from lots of drawing again it's that it's that thing where it's it's like you need to you need to understand how the rules work in order to break them without having the piece seem wrong and so like this person clearly could do a very like rigid perspective if they wanted to but they're like no, I don't have to. I don't need your rules. Yeah. Because, like, it doesn't... Not everything meets... Like, the vanishing point of the table is here. Yeah. Approximately. Mm -hmm. But that's not the vanishing point of the booth. No. The booth meet This booth's vanishing point is, like, over here somewhere, but this booth is going this way towards somewhere this table is going over here somewhere i love it it's like there's not a there's not a stable vanishing point to this piece yeah this chair is going up there but it all works this one's going over here the vanishing point is like here <laughs> everything goes towards like this general area but it's not go it's not exact it's not going to like one point yeah I think that's what gives it its like cool loosey goosey feel. Yeah. Where it feels like it's more like evocative of 
it's like kind of a uh, fun loose vibe it's like that that painting that uh that julia likes of the the guy who like painted it so that everything is wrong the like the longer you look at it oh it's yeah supposed to like give you the feeling like you're drunk yeah but it gives you the feeling that you're food drunk yeah exactly god that's really yeah. cool it makes that's me really want to cool. like it makes me want to try more yeah just like try more stuff and you know, like it doesn't have to be exact yeah but you got to really know what you're doing to pull this off yeah and i maybe again I it's like it does none of it feels like a mistake it all feels intentional yeah like the yeah the the booth the booth going like it's like that's that's how it feels if you've ever eaten that many plates of whatever this monster restaurant makes and then this guy and this guy and this guy those are those look like drawfies to me <laughs> yeah this looks like caldwell drew it yeah and so does this kind of yeah those eyes yeah very very caldwellian in appearance Just no mouth. Don't need it. Well, there is kind yeah. of a. There's like a little mustache. Yeah, there's like a little mustache, which yeah, is just. If that's, if that's supposed to be mouth line or. Yeah. That's so. I love it. That's like cheek, big I, forehead. I also love the food is like just the right combination of gross looking but still kind of appetizing looking yeah this this looks like a eyeball crab pizza monster but, but I, like, I would still I'd, dig into it I'd, like that dip in there i'd try it yeah we'll bring this back up and and just look at it as we close out here uh that's that's the end of the stream that's all the time we got but I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you felt like you you got a little insight into how to learn little bits and pieces from the artists you love without getting overwhelmed by the amount of things they're able to do. Um, and try this with your favorite artist, or if you just like see a piece you like on Instagram yeah. or, or ArtStation or wherever, try to just like pop it into Photoshop and glean like one yeah, tidbit. Pick one, pick one thing. Yeah. And then put it away for a minute and then, you know, take it back out later. Yeah, you'll you'll be surprised if you just like do stuff like this. You'll be drawing like a month from now and you'll be like drawing a face in like semi profile and be like, oh, well, the line from the nose of the chin should parallel the line from the top lip to the bottom lip. And you'll be like, whoa, yeah. I just yeah, know that now, I guess. That stuff will get stuck in there. Exactly. And that'll just... You know, that'll just help you. Yeah, not everything will stick, but you'll you'll gravitate towards Julia, we're trying to end the stream. You'll gravitate towards uh <laughs> bless you. Come on. <laughs> bless you, Julia. She towards um me, but... like the things you gravitate towards that stick in your mind will be things that go on to like become a part of your style. Right. Like the stuff that, that sticks, that that contributes to your art style now. And you've just added to it. You've added to your skill set. And uh, don't expect everything to stick that you try to do this with. Like when I tried to do the um, the fine line hatching, I'm, I'm not going to do that again. That was too hard and I didn't like it. But a lot of stuff I did like. Playing with the watercolors was fun. Looking at these crazy perspectives. Stuff that I want to try later. So just give stuff a try. Don't put too much pressure on it. Yeah. And uh, have a nice time. Have a nice time. Happy New Year. Happy and New we'll Year. In the New Year. Happy drawing. Holidays. Thank you for your support, everyone who's at the this tier. Yeah. And um, 
if you're not if you're, this year if you're watching this later uh keep an eye out when we announce what the classes are going to be so that if you see one you really want to catch live uh you can bump up for for just a month to to pop in here and and you can and like i said there's like eight people watching this live so it's a very very small class size so if you have if you... things you want to say it'll definitely get read yeah um and that's that's it i guess anything else nathan no that was that's what i was gonna say um i mean i'm always super impressed with uh with the stuff i see showing up in the uh draw class uh channel on the discord so if you if you use any of the you know if, if if you find yourself using techniques that you've gleaned from uh from looking at other artists work please uh please post those in the in the discord along with the the artist that you're you're learning from because i i want to see yeah totally all right everyone thanks for watching we'll bye. see you next time bye